So how are you, Lucy, anyway? I'm really well. Thanks, Paula. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for joining us and giving us your time today. Um, I would just love to know more about how you um, got into the early learning sector or early childhood education. Where did it come from? What, what was the process? Yeah, definitely. So I work for Kimberly Clark. We're a, a global business that owns a number of consumer brands, but today obviously most relevant for our community is the Huggies brand. So Huggies is the world's largest nappy brand and um, you know, very proudly stocked in lots of different childcare centres around the world and around Australia. And so part of my remit in my work here is looking at sustainability and social impact across all of our brands. And uh, as part of that, I've sort of been working on this project for a little while that we're going to talk about today, the Nappy Loop. Uh, I'm really excited that one of the, the hero partners in this project is one of our childcare providers. Um, and we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But I also have two small children. So I have a nearly four-year-old and a nearly one-year-old. And so I have a wonderful, um, I'm very lucky to have a wonderful child care centre where I spend, you know, a little bit of time and uh, my children are really well cared for. So I engage on both levels through work and through my home life. Wow, which is amazing really, isn't it? You're getting a perspective, two different perspectives of, yeah. of how, how it all works and what, what happens at the back end of a centre and how it all comes together at the front end. That's right, yeah. So I think that's been particularly interesting and one of the things that, you know, I personally love about my work is the opportunity to work on things that are really relevant to me and my family life and the stage that we're at. So looking at things, you know, nappy recycling, the social impact programs we get to work on at Kimberly Clark, you know, where we're supporting families, you know, um, looking at neonatal care and uh, families in need around Australia is so significant because I know exactly what it feels like to be, you know, in that situation with young children and I'm in a very privileged situation to be able to care for them and have the resources I need. And if you're a family that's, you know, got extra challenges, it's great to know that there are these support networks out there and different programs that will help make your life easier. Um, so, you know, it's definitely something that I'm very passionate about and that Kimberly Clark and Huggies are very passionate about too. Yeah, and look, I mean, I've got three grown-up children and I certainly remember using Huggies back when, yes. they, were, when they were very little um, and that same experience through that through those services as well. Um, no, it's fantastic. Look, and we met, you were talking about sustainability impact um, and environmental impact earlier as part of, um, you know, your remit. Can you tell us about Nappy Loop? What yes. is it and how did it come to fruition? Yeah, so Kimberly Clark has a global goal to reduce our environmental impact by half whilst improving a billion lives. There's some really big, you know, big, big things in there that we need to work on, um, but some really significant opportunities as well. So here in Australia, we're really proud that as part of that ambition, we're looking at end of life systems. And by that, I mean, where do our products end up when people are finished using them? And for nappies, there's actually no recycling infrastructure in Australia at the moment and we know that 95% of around 300,000 babies born in Australia every year will use disposable nappies and Huggies being the biggest brand as well as you know us having this really strong drive internally towards sustainability we said you know we've really got to do something about this and so the project started in 2021 uh, not long after we released this new global strategy it was sort of all aligned out of that and we started with a feasibility study where we explored what the opportunity was for nappy recycling in Australia, what would be the right technology, what would be the right um, way to collect those nappies, how would we do it? And we did this in partnership with the CSIRO, Australia's um, National Science Agency, and they made some recommendations out of which we formed a pilot, which we launched last year. So that's what we've called the nappy loop. So the pilot is running in South Australia with the support of the South Australian government, and we are collecting nappies from a childcare centre run by the G8 uh, group. So they're Australia's largest private network of childcare centres. And we're working with their team to basically put the nappies in a separate bin. We collect them and we take them to a site called Pete's. They're a wonderful partner who've been really supportive in exploring this opportunity with us and how we can you know, process what's quite a complex product through a recycling stream. We separate them out, we take out any plastics, and then we run the organics, which is sort of the fluff inside a nappy and what helps to absorb any wee and any poos in there. And that goes through what's essentially a kind of advanced composting system, an anaerobic digester it's called. It actually works a bit like a stomach and you put in extra enzymes and things and it helps break down the food the way that an organic 
system would, but just a bit faster. And then out the end, you get this really nutrient rich product that you can use mixing with compost to support soil health. So it's amazing basically that, yeah, these organic products from our bodies and our babies' bodies are being turned back into an organic resource um, at the end of it. So that's the, I guess, the process and how it works. And then at the end, we have um, this organic product and then we're also working on pathways for the other elements as well. So it's it's very cool. It's the, the first of its kind in Australia and it's actually one of only two programs globally that is doing this. Uh, so we're super excited and proud. I'm really grateful for our partners, including the childcare partners, to help make it all happen. Wow, that's amazing. And I mean, what a great thing for Australia to be one of two globally to be doing this. Yeah. You know, it's, and look, and I'm just going to throw this out there. People are, who are our audience listening are probably thinking, oh, my God, how do we do poos and wees and separate? Who who does it? Where do you stick it into a bin? How does it not smell in the centre or that yeah. sort of thing? What happens? So it's a great question. So from a, you know, especially because our community listening are all sort of in that childcare setting, we had to ask to make a little bit of a change so we can't have anything else apart from nappies going in. So the, the teams would have to um, separate out the gloves and stuff that they would normally use and just put the nappies into a specially marked bin. They're stored outside and they're collected very frequently so the smell doesn't build up, but they're also a bit separate to where people are coming and going. Um, and there was people were worried, oh, will it smell? But actually it's actually been fine. I think because they're outside, there's airflow and they're collected really frequently. Um, it doesn't build up and they're taken and basically they're sort of dried and, and shredded, like ripped apart into all different, you know, little pieces. Yeah. And then they're soaked in a special mix of water and actually a sugary mix that we've tested with our partners to make it the right mix. And then the super absorbent polymer, which is that sort of gel-like substance at the bottom once there's a wee in there, you know, all of us yeah. are familiar with parents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> parents <laughs> memories. You know, yeah, that's right. That heavier element, which absorbs the wetness from baby and keeps baby really dry and rash-free, that actually sinks at the bottom and the plastic flows to the top. We take it off and you're left with all the organic mix. And then that's able to go through this digestion process um, wow. safely. So, yeah, we're really uh, excited to share that the CSIRO did a, um, a testing process on the outputs of this uh, trial and they found that there was no microplastics left in the digestate. We successfully separated all of that super absorbent polymer out so we could engage with it and that everything that we wanted to run through was successfully biodegraded safely and we had biogas produced as well which helps to power the system so it's a really circular system and that's all been validated by our research partners very recently so the report only came out a couple of weeks ago it's, it's new news but you know we sort of had seen those healthy results but now i've had that formal verification step to know that it's happened so and, and that um that report that's come out is that a um public um, knowledge could that be shared with our audience? Uh, yeah, we, we will probably be putting it on our website. We haven't just yet. We will be soon and we'll be updating that. Yeah, um, but we've got some different resources they can see, like a short video as well that sort of explains the process if they wanted to share it with others in the network that just sort of, you know, I'm giving a bit more detail today, but this breaks it down into just those really simple steps and what we're doing. And then we'll be looking at sort of what's next and putting more information out there. But yeah, they can always visit. There's um, a page on the Huggies website that talks a little bit more about it and explains the process so far. And yeah. we'll share all this with our audience as well. So they won't have to sort of go digging. They'll be able to link it through the podcast um, as well. Amazing. With them, um, now you mentioned about um, what happens at the end and it's the soil and it added to your compost. Who can buy that? Who, when, how do we access that in the community? Is that back to the centres um, that have added the nappies? Is it for public purchase? Because it sounds really exciting. Yeah, that's a great question. So we're still very early days is the short answer. So the product just to make sure that it's completely safe there's different regulators all around the country that have to kind of give it a, a green tick so we're working with the local team to find out what would they need ticked off to say yep this is safe we can sell it so for now what we've produced in terms of this organic product this compost is staying on site and being used on the site by Pete. So the Pete's team sell commercial levels of compost out to different to, to farms and to different places like that. Um, and the hope is definitely that one day this, you know, stream of work will be just part of the mix. You know, it'll be it'll be sold on and used in the way that other agricultural products are. But we're just going through this last testing stage to make sure that it's all, you know, adhering to the to the um, 
local regulators guidelines basically so we know it's safe we know that everything's come out of it that needs to we know that you know it's um really nutrient rich we just need to basically tick a few more boxes and then we can see what's possible in terms of expansion and, and making it available as a product to others but for now uh yeah just still still just trying to tick those boxes and learn a bit more about it it's still pretty new oh fantastic that sounds so exciting um now, can I ask you also, so you mentioned GA Early Learning Services yep. are using a, a part of the Nappy Loop. Is it all of their centres? Is it a select few that are trialling it? Is it across Australia, that selection? So at the moment, we're working with um, the, the one childcare centre in South Australia just to really, you know, do this first right. batch test and see how it all works. It's the um, Mount Barker Welly Road Centre, as they call it. Um, and we are absolutely hoping to scale this work. So, you know, there's a couple of things we need to do beforehand where we're working with um, a specialist consultancy who work in sort of this infrastructure and waste management space yes. to map out what does scale up look like? Because we want this to be a sustainable scale up. And I don't necessarily mean that environmentally sustainability focus, because obviously that's the whole means and ends of the program. I mean, how can it be a sustaining program where we, develop infrastructure that can last where then, you know, families or childcare centres want to be involved. It's something that's there for the long term. So that's why we're doing so much due diligence to make sure that we look after every element before we go into a broader program so that we can ensure that something that's really robust and that people can get really involved with. So we're doing that work um, with some partners as well to, to just add that third party lens. But then we're also doing some more exploration with the CSIRO, which I alluded to earlier, to just do those extra levels of testing on the soil to ensure that it passes the regulator's requirements, which would make it, you know, a fully closed loop system where it's more viable for every partner, including the waste managers to process. Right. And then we could, once we kind of have all those pieces in play, we can look to then expand the offering to include more centers, more, more different, um, you know, collection sites and so on. Yeah. And, and look, and that's sort of leading to my next question about what comes next for the project um, and building that. So what are the next steps um, for the project? So really at the moment, um, you know, obviously really passionate about connecting with our network of childcare centres, but also at the moment it's very much a government engagement piece. So really just working with government to understand, you know, what do they need from us to, to prove? You know, how can we prove that this is working? Because we know it's working. You know, we've seen the results. We have academic third-party verification. Now we really are engaging closely with government to make sure they're comfortable Yes. Um, so that we can offer this to more people because we know that the demand and interest is there. You know, we've had it from parents. We've had yes. it from child care centres reaching out. You know, we have a lot of interest. So we just want to be able to move as quickly as possible to to make this a reality in Australia. But, yeah, that, that government play piece is really important. <clears throat> and also just having all those final reports signed off, which we hope to do in the next six months. So by the end of this year, really be in a place to have an, a clear pathway to scaling. What is, you know, are we scaling first within South Australia and then state by state, or what does that really look like? That's what we're working on at the moment to map that out as a clear plan. <clears throat> and then, you know, what are the requirements with that? So um, it's not to say that we're not, you know, connecting with people now. We absolutely are. You know, if people want to connect with us, we're really open, but it will be a staggered approach. And it's like anything new. It's a completely new process. It's a completely new program. There's no one sort of um, who's laid a, a clear path. We're working in you know so closely with our partners to work it out with the peats team with the collection partners solar resource recovery with the g8 team you know we want to make sure it's sustainable for the centers as well that it doesn't add too much time or complexity to their um, operating procedures and making sure it's something that's very sustainable from that side of things you know so we've been talking to them to understand how we could make it easier um you know so all of those elements are really important before you launch into something that's outside the pilot phase, it goes into a, you know, a longer term program. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, it's not just about putting an nappy bin there and then someone's right. putting it in. There's actually a whole heap of checks and um, balances that have to go as part of the operational uh, operation of that centre and the responsible person. It, it exactly. exactly. So we, that was what was one of the key things was to work with the G8 team to understand you know, what does an changing procedure look like? And we helped with them in terms of designing some new collateral that would explain the step change to separate the nappies out, um, you know, and provide that extra information for their staff. And one of the amazing things, so, you know, we've had some really positive feedback from the team at the site at Welly Road, 
has been that they have sort of three key audiences who are really interested, you know, the, the business audience, the investor audience, depending on the, um, the way the childcare centre is structured. The parents obviously are really interested and really grateful to hear that something is happening in this space because obviously sustainability is really important. You know, we know to all Australians, like it's a, it's a really topical issue. People want to know how brands and companies and services are engaging and doing better and, you know, supporting our environment and contributing. But then it's also really important to staff, so to employees, you know, attraction and retention of staff is important in all sectors and it's very important in this sector. And it makes the staff feel great to know that they're working on a project that's got this, you know, these bigger goals, I guess. And it really is a way that the centre can also help deliver on their national quality standards, you know, looking at contributing to a sustainable future. So it becomes something that the team can discuss as well. You know, so there's lots of levels to why it's a great yeah. program for a childcare centre. Um, and yeah, I know it's something lots of people want to get involved in. <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I mean, I'm just thinking the parents of that, Sandra, are probably thinking, how do I drop my nappies off? Yeah. How can I do that? Is there a way people can reach out to you to do that? I mean, what, what level um, does the communication need to be at or can parents contact you about it? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, you know, we, we are still in a little bit of a early phase to be taking on new partners right now from a collection perspective but we love to hear from people we love to hear that, that support and that interest is there and we are basically compiling a, a big you know database of people who've wanted to get involved so that when the time is right we can reach back out and sort of um, bring people on the journey with us we encourage parents to directly engage through our huggies um, channels so you know we have our huggies team on the other side of all of our social channels and our emails you know who can share this information and you know, who work in a space with us who are working on the project. Um, you can also reach out through the childcare network teams to your account manager, you know, who will either be able to answer questions or put you in touch with me directly. Or I'm very happy if people want to reach out to me directly as I'm sort of the project manager on this and can compile them and, and store those details to make sure that we let you know as we have updates. I think as we get a bit closer, we might be starting to do some more regular communications around the project as well, just so you know what's happening. Um, and if people are really interested to be a collection site, you know, mapping them out to see who's in what area, you know, so on. So absolutely yeah. reach out. We will certainly keep hold of your details. We might not have an update for you for a little while as these, you know, these processes take a lot of time, but we will absolutely keep it on file. Yeah, and of course, we you know we'll always share through our um, through our website at One Place Childcare as well, and keep up to date um, and share anything that you want to provide through this podcast, which will sit on our um, website as well. Uh, and it's so exciting! It is so exciting to hear someone, you know, or a company taking charge in this area. Um, I, I I know you always think when you're doing nappies, me, oh wow, it's mm. like so scary isn't it so what a great initiative and um look looking forward for the sector what do you think are the big issues for the early early childhood education in terms of environmental impact yeah so i guess i um i can't speak to the whole sector in terms of you know the very specifics of of, of what the team is looking at but for us you know looking at, at nappies and at wipes uh which are obviously key products that the centres are using. I'm sure that there's lots of other sustainability initiatives in play. I think looking at those, you know, end of life systems, making sure that these products that are so essential, you know, I think some things we're all trying to cut down our usage of, of single use items or of plastics and so on as individuals. I know, you know, I certainly am. And um, as corporates, you know, we have these, these extraordinary goals that we're really, you know, reaching for and cutting our material usage. So the first thing is really a reduction of those materials. And when there's something that's really essential. So for us, our services and our products, you know, really enable people to live their lives. Like nappies are absolutely essential in this sector. So making them as sustainable as possible, you know, lowering the material footprint of what goes in, you know, finding solutions for end of life. So recycling systems, making sure that parents are really educated, you know, sharing the knowledge of these things that are changing and, you know, providing those really amazing products. Because the thing is, you know, we want parents to have an experience of using Huggies products that are absolutely, you know, first in class for performance whilst being assured that there's a really sustainable outcome at the same time. So that's our job, you know, and there's other jobs that are that are out there to make the world more sustainable, you know, around energy yeah. usage and the food you're offering and, you know, um, how you're teaching the children, you know. Like I know my kids come home and they're just, you know, well, my, my little one's only just started, so she's not saying much yet, but my nearly four-year-old 
you know, and they're doing these wonderful things in his center and he's really taking it on and learning. So that's the next generation as well. It you is, know. it is. And, um, and, that, um, and for them to know that we're also looking after their future. That's right. They'll grow up, or, you know, even right through your teens now, the whole thing is, is very much about um, environment and future impacts uh, right. of what we are doing. Absolutely. I know I it was really interesting, actually, on the way into my office this morning, I was listening, we had a podcast from our local um, president for the whole Asia Pacific region, and he was speaking to, we're a long-term partner as Kimberly Clark, globally and regionally, of UNICEF. Yes. And um, there was a very interesting conversation because yesterday was World Environment Day, and for that he spoke to um, the APAC leader of UNICEF, so, who put out this, you know, this report saying that, you know, the climate crisis is a is a child rights crisis, you know, it's actually going to affect children disproportionately and, you know, they're going to inherit, you know, the world that we're working in and living in every day now. So it's it was, I found that very compelling and timely to listen to that on my way in this morning and think about that, you know, because obviously it's becoming more, more real and it's very exciting and a privileged position that I'm in to get to work on these amazing sustainability programs for Kimberly Clark and for Huggies you know, that create real change that we can be proud of and that people can get involved with. Yeah, and um, I'm just going to actually go back to something because you mentioned UNICEF and mm. it was a, was it a billion lives that you mentioned earlier? Was it the target? Kimberly Clark's global target, not Australia's target, oh. but we're part of it. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, because that was my other. So that global target of a billion yeah. lives, yes. is that linked in with UNICEF? Is that, that's... Is yeah, that... so they're, they're a partner of ours in lots of regions in the world. So Kimberly Clark is a global business reaches, um, you know, a, I think we reach a fifth of the world's population almost every day with our essential products and working with UNICEF in uh, a number of countries around Asia Pacific, you know, Vietnam, I believe, China, I think, um, so a few others, and then also in other parts of the world and other regions. So, yeah, in, in Australia and New Zealand, um, we have a number of partnerships. They're not, uh, UNICEF is not as actively involved in programs here just because we're a slightly more developed market they tend to be in some of those looking at water um, and sanitation you know access climate resilience so on um yes. we do a lot of work th with uh local partners here and the huggies brand gives a lot of product to organizations food bank is one of our most um supported organizations here just ensuring families who can't afford you know groceries including nappies period care products and others can receive them so we give a lot of product through them so different programs in play here and that's part of how we'll reach those targets but here in australia we have a goal to reach um 30 million people by 2030 so still a very big goal for a small wow that's group. fantastic yeah, some of the others <laughs> yeah yeah so. and and look you know we all know cost of living we all know mm. you know there are definitely families impacted um Absolutely, yeah and there's always families impacted but you, you know we're just going to grow those numbers um yeah through this cost of living. So the yeah. fact that you know, you're using food bank and, and helping those um, yep. in, in situations of, of dire need is so, right. so good to hear. And then at the end of it, we've got Nappy Loop. Yes. Which is fantastic. Oh, it, that's just such a wonderful project. And, you know, obviously such a proud thing for Australia from, um, from Kimberly Clark as well to be part of. That's right. And so, we, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, you go. I'm, I was just going to say, and there's a number of other, um, you know, different initiatives that Huggies is doing, as you said, you know, to make the products more accessible and, um, you know, more sustainable too. And we're very proud of those things. So you can always learn more about that through the Huggies contacts or through, you know, through your site, as you said. Uh, and we also have a, a special um, offer through the account management network with our Huggies team as well, that if after this, you know, the teams want to try the Huggies products if they're not already using them we have a free week's trial available so that just is something that you know people can take away and have a look at what we're doing and learn about and engage with our brand more yeah. um you know after this as well yeah fantastic and you'll share that with us of course for that yeah. free week um with oh that's fantastic look now before we finish up we um, like to ask our wonderful guests for um a personal motto wise words do you oh. have one you'd like to share with us lucy Oh gosh. Well, I, 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 don't, I think I, um, it's good to respond spontaneously as I suppose I can't overthink it. I think probably the thing that I come back to the most is my, some of my mum's advice. And she always said to me, you can do anything and not everything. And I think as somebody who's very passionate about sustainability and social impact and, you know, leaving the world a better place and having the opportunity to work, you know, in an organization that's values aligned to me, I can get, you know, very excited and want to do everything all today. And it's really important when you're doing these projects 
um, you know, or in my life as well, you know, to just, you know, clearly choose what I'm working on right now and be really focused on that. And for now, I'm very excited and passionate about, you know, nappy recycling is one of my biggest projects at work and it's a big part of my life and family life as well. So I'm really deep in this space. But I think being single-minded as, as much as you can when you're trying to create change and do something positive helps keep you on track, helps you focus, helps you not feel overwhelmed because some of these big problems are, are hard. That's why they're still a work in progress, you know. So not shying away from that and just taking it step by step, you know, and Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you can that's do but not everything all at once. <laughs> and that's a great motto. And, and really what you're looking at, that project is global, right? So hopefully, you know, yeah, and to be that second company or second um, process globally, you're, you're, you're forging that pathway ahead. So, yeah, I, I get the um, you can do anything but not everything. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> one thing at all. Maybe in time, but one, one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, one thing at a time. Well, time. Thank you so much for your time, Lucy, today. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been fun. And look, I, you know, that the the um, Nappy Loop program, what a what a wonderful start. And I hope what we'll do is catch up with you again. Um, yeah, absolutely. Let, let's see the progress and have another discussion about that. And, of course, we'll share everything Lucy's talked about today um, with our audience and um, and hopefully, you know, they so you get some um uh, people, people clicking on the um, yeah, the free, the, free, the, free, yeah, the nappy loop, and obviously building that database for um, our customers as well. Be wonderful. Oh, lost the light, my room. It's perfect timing. <laughs> I do a little. I'm still here. Anyway, I'm, okay, I'm going to hit stop. <laughs>